piercing blood! What? Now, this video is going to be different from my usual crossovers, but just watch till the end and let me cook. In this video, I'll be putting Izuku Midoriya in the gauntlet and gets various Jujutsu Kaisen characters to show you guys just how busted this kid actually would be if he found himself in the JJK verse. Starting out slow, then moving up with stronger and stronger characters that might pose more of a challenge to him. Also, some of the fights in this video will contain spoilers for both the My Hero manga and JJK. But by the time this comes out, some of the spoilers in My Hero might already be animated in this ongoing season. But that being said, let's get straight into this with the first person Deku's gonna be up against... My Zenin. Next up, Deku vs Momo Nishimiya. Deku vs Miwa Kasumi. New shadow style! Simple domain! This allows me to attack anything that enters the 2.21 meteor radius, my domain, on the Earth. Alright, you get the point. None of the girls of Kyoto Jujutsu High are even gonna be able to touch Deku. Obviously, I'm using the manga version of Deku at his absolute strongest, but I'd say the same thing if they were up against like Season 2 Deku. But let's move on now. Deku vs Kamo Noritoshi. It's pretty much the same thing here, but I do think he's got one attack that could catch Deku off guard, and I think you guys know it too. PIERCING BLOOD! Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Deku has Danger Sense, he could easily dodge that. And you'd make a good point. But Danger Sense isn't a perfect quirk that allows him to predict any attack and come out unscathed. Even when he was fighting Nagat in Season 6, that bullet still hit him. And Piercing Blood is described as an attack that far exceeds the speed of sound, so I could definitely see Deku getting hit by it the first time Kamo fires the technique at him. That said, that doesn't mean he stands a chance at winning. He's just the first guy on this list that could potentially land a solid blow on Deku. But moving on, we'll have the last two Kyoto students that people actually care about. Deku vs Kokichi Muta, aka Mekumaru. Now here there's only one form we really need to focus on. Because Mekumaru in the Goodwill event is getting destroyed, there's no questioning that. But on the other hand, his Absolute Mode might put up a decent fight, right? Then again, maybe not. We all saw Deku destroy that giant robot in Season 1 when he couldn't even control one for all. So there's no reason he couldn't do the same here. And after that, it's GG's. Deku vs Toto Toto's a strong guy, that's for sure. His boogie woogie would be something that Deku would have to get used to at first, and that would earn him some solid blows. What? But that's about it. Deku is still way faster than him, and with Danger Sense, he would definitely adapt to his technique. Also, Mahito made him spit out a ton of blood after he connected with the Black Flash in Shibuya. So imagine if Deku connects with a single smash reinforced with all of his quirks. Detroit SMASH! Toto's done. Ah! Moving on to Tokyo Jujutsu High. Deku vs Yuji. The main characters finally clash. Yuji is a lot more durable than pretty much everyone I put in this video. He's been punched through buildings by Sukuna. He had his gut and his face slashed countless times. So I can see him taking a couple of smashes from Deku and getting back on his feet. But the battle wouldn't go that much differently than it did for everyone else. Deku's speed and power far exceeds Yuji's and with Danger Sense, there's no way he'd be able to catch him off guard. Deku vs Megumi Fushiguro Domain Expansion! Ka 
I mirror Shadow Garden! By the off chance he actually could pull off a domain, it'd be the only way Megumi would have a chance at hurting Deku. And maybe, just maybe, his demon dog could land a lethal hit on Deku. But again, with Deku's speed and power... The second user's quirk. Gear shift! That's incredibly unlikely. And we all know how well Megami performs against extremely fast opponents. Of course, there's one more thing that could give him the edge. Sacred treasure. Sacred swing! But that's gonna be for another video. And there you have it. I know I could have put more characters in this gauntlet, but I didn't want this video to take me forever to make. But let me know in the comments if you'd like me to continue this, and if so, what other crossovers you'd like to see. And by the way, if you're still expecting Blue Lock Academia Part 5, not gonna lie, I wouldn't get your hopes up. These animations took me at least 2-3 to three months to make, and as someone who wants to do YouTube full-time eventually, that upload schedule is just not it. I might go back to it, but for now, just consider the series finished. One thing I can promise you guys now is these videos are not going to take 3 months to make anymore. This one here took me about a month and I'm trying to get the time down even lower, which is why you see me use the comic slash Spider-Verse inspired style. By making things a bit easier for myself, you guys can expect a lot more content more frequently. So please, like, subscribe, share this video if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.